Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at the Canadian 1964 pattern web equipment. And this is something, well, this is a video that will be part of a, a series looking at this equipment. It's an interesting set of web equipment, very much of its time in terms of thinking. Uh, and obviously it's designed to go along with Canada's uh, combat uniform, which as we'll get into, had been designed to do some of the work that the web equipment is no longer doing. The thinking behind this seems to stem from Cold War thoughts around a nuclear battlefield. NATO's doctrine at this time was essentially that we will go nuclear. Um, there was a very fine trigger for NATO having to use nuclear weapons due to Soviet superiority of numbers. Uh, they do this, we do this, we'll go nuclear um, to blunt a Soviet assault. Uh, and it was uh, essentially to make up for conventional firepower and, and numbers of conventional forces. So a battlefield in Europe was going to be nuclear, which meant that men were going to have to be armoured, you're going to have to have armoured infantry and armoured personnel carriers. And this web equipment definitely seems to be designed around that thinking in terms of the load it's designed to carry and so forth. So we'll get into the details of this now, just to talk briefly about the mannequin and the way it's set up. This is based on photographs uh, illustrating the equipment when it was being introduced. So this is not based on field use from period photographs, it's based on a studio photograph of a chap wearing the equipment to demonstrate it. Similarly, the combat uniform, the combat cap and so forth are included based on that photograph. This is not taken from someone in the field. The equipment is worn as designed, it's not been modified as it often was in the field with the addition of pouches from the 1951 pattern and so forth. That's something for a future video. This is looking at the equipment worn as it was designed to be worn with all the basic components on the belt. And we'll talk about that as we move this round. Very briefly, we'll just talk about the combat jacket's role in all this, the combat coat. The pockets are designed to take magazines for the C1 rifle. The equipment therefore has no ammunition pouches as part of the design. This here is a grenade pouch. It's not an ammunition pouch. So it's very unusual in that regard in that the the coat, the combat coat, is essentially designed as a beast of burden for the ammunition. A strange design and not very popular and certainly men would modify the equipment as I've already said with pouches from the previous equipment. So it's very stripped down, it's very lightweight, very thin Y-shaped suspenders. You can see the straps coming down over the shoulders here and these have Velcro belt loops. All of this will be covered in detail in a future video. We'll look at the individual components but we'll just look at them here on the mannequin in this video, give you an idea of how it all comes together. They come down and attach using belt loops onto the belt on each side. The belt itself is a thin, uh, fairly thin design. Uh, plastic buckle here, the buckles here on the straps, the loops which attach the belt loops onto the braces, everything's plastic. Quite advanced in that regard, but nevertheless, it, it, quite a flimsy design. So bring in new technology in terms of the plastics and so forth, but you don't get a good product at the end, really. I think that's fair to say. The pouches, uh, by and large, use a, a plastic version of a quick release loop here, you can see. So we've got a, a webbing tab there and then these plastic components here. So it works as a quick release in the standard manner. Loop passes over the, over the staple there, the quick release tab goes down in there. This is the grenade pouch, as I've said already. As with the belt loops for the suspenders, this attaches onto the belt using a Velcro belt loop. Velcro being the modern sort of trade name for a specific brand. Touch and close, I think, was the, the term used at the time. That's the actual designation for the fastener but I will inevitably end up using the word Velcro in this. This will cull two grenades, uh, or four smaller, um, I forget the designation, but four of the smaller anti-personnel grenades, but two sort of M26 type grenades will fit in there quite nicely, or Mills bombs or whatever. It will easily take two uh, hand grenades, standard sort of sized hand grenades in there. And underneath there is a Velcro loop, as you can see there, which carries an adapter, which allows this to, um, allows hand grenades to be used as rifle grenades, essentially. You Fit in the cup here, you fit a hand grenade in there, and this will then fit onto the rifle grenade firing adapter, and off it goes. So there's the ability to carry that underneath there, very rarely seen in the field, but seen in the photographs and nice to illustrate. And thank you to my friend Ian Parker for sorting me out with this. It's been very nice to have, allows the full equipment set to be shown on the mannequin here. On the left-hand side at the front, we have the haversack, the carrier for the respirator, which of course is the, well, the C, C2 and then the C3 later on. Normally I look at respirator haversacks separate from the equipment because in British practice they're generally patterned separately. They're not part of the patterned equipment, but in this instance, as far as I'm aware, this is actually part of the 1964 pattern web equipment. It is a, a patterned part of this overall set. It can also be worn or carried on its own separate harness, but in this instance it's attached to the belt using, again, touch and close or Velcro 
belt loops. We'll move this around now and we'll have a look at the left hand side. Looking at the left hand side of the mannequin here, you can see the haversack or the, the carrier for the respirator here. On the side obviously has pouches on the outside for the various um, MBC um, items that will be carried as well, detector paper and so forth. Fits neatly on, the, there's two belt loops here, fits neatly on the belt there. As I say, it does also have a separate set of straps which allow it to be carried separately. You could also see, if I just move the, the arm out of the way here, you can see the brace coming down, big chunky plastic buckle there, a plastic loop here which then attaches onto a belt loop which sim simply Velcros around the, uh, the belt. Um, as I say, all uh, rather flimsy, but it's not designed to carry a great deal of weight, of course, that's one thing with the equipment. Bringing the arm round here of the, the combat coat, you can see the bayonet in its scabbard there, carried in a frog on the belt. The frog is essentially very similar to that which would be seen previously in other web equipment, two loops which the stud on the scabbard fits through. Uh, certainly also were seen used later on with the 1951 pattern to carry the bayonet for the C1. This is a British bayonet, but it serves the purpose of, of illustrating here. So no real change there from the previous set of equipment uh, in the way that's uh, carried. We'll move this around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the equipment here, I'll just tip the combat cap forward slightly. You see the joining piece over the shoulders here where the, the Y shape of the suspenders come down. Uh, obviously that very lightweight joining piece of webbing there just to keep them together. Then a single supporting point in the rear here. Again, the big chunky plastic buckle, plastic loop there, and then a Velcro loop that fits onto the belt between the two components carried on the back here. Now, the 951 pattern canteen carrier had had lifted off fasteners. It was essentially a copy of Second World War US practice. This is almost a copy of USM 1956 practice. Obviously now we've moved on to snaps or press studs depending on the terminology you want to use. Stitching down the front, from the front profile it's almost indistinguishable. On the back it has a belt loop with Velcro, the standard fitting for this set of equipment. But otherwise very similar to US practice again, essentially copied across. What we have here is an element copied across from the previous 1951 pattern and that is the mess tin pouch and this is essentially the same in form, no longer have a metal quick release, the components here are plastic, and again, rather than having hanger hooks on the back and buckles on the side, it has a Velcro belt loop to the rear. And it's also made of a slightly finer canvas material as well. So, as I say, that's copied across from the 1950, the, M, well, the 1951 pattern. This is copied from M1956 essentially, but the fittings on the back are different. So, again, influences from Canada's previous equipment, and again, copying US practice with the canteen carrier essentially. We'll move this round now and have a look at the right hand side. I'll just move the arm out of the way and we can see on the right hand side here we have the carrier for the entrenching tool. Now this carries a US M1951 entrenching tool with the, both the pick head and the shovel head, the folding entrenching tool. They were made in Canada as well, this particular example is, is a US made one. Very simple carrier, fits on the belt with, you've guessed it, a Velcro belt loop, fairly standard from that point of view. I haven't actually seen many photographs of these being carried on the belt, uh, or carried at all really, um, but I, I don't know how common it was to actually carry the entrenching tool, or whether they were sometimes carried in, in a different manner, uh, but it does fit neatly on the belt there, um, obviously. The carrier is an open-topped version of uh, essentially US practice, it has to be to fit the shape of the entrenching tool in. Instead of having a full flap, there's just a piece of webbing with a quick release tab that loops over the top there and fastens on. And the position of these items on the belt is taken from the photograph showing this worn as designed essentially, but it would be, as I've already said, heavily modified for use in the field. So there we are, that was the 1964 pattern web equipment. As already said, a very light load really, uh, in terms of, of what's being carried here, particularly when you think that this isn't being used to carry ammunition. On that point, just before we finish up, I will show you the magazines carried in the pockets of this, uh, just to give you an example of, of what that looks like and, and where they can be carried. So in the top pockets here, you can see that these will take an individual C1 magazine very comfortably. And then the lower pockets have loops in them, uh, two on each side. And these again will neatly take magazines for the C1. We will be looking at these individual components all in more detail in a future video, part two to this. And we'll probably move on and perhaps look at it adapted for use in the field. And I'll probably make a follow-up video as well, looking at things like the C2 Magbra and potentially the the uh, backpacks and things that went with this in the future if I happen to pick them up. I haven't got those yet, but it's nice to be able to talk about the basic web equipment. I do hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. 
If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both PayPal and Patreon linked down below. And a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much once again. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. And if you want to get in contact, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now. do some of the work that the web equipment no longer does, which is essentially carrying... Oh. Blooming helicopters! <laughs>